So welcome to LNP Renewable System Later. Today we are going to discuss something about the PABA system, public addressing and the voice control design basics. So what are the things that we are going to discuss today in the PAV system? What is a PAV system? Where can we use this PAV system? Okay, how it looks like? Okay, and what are the things we should know while designing the PAV system in a building? The building can be in house, it can be in industry, it can be a, a multi-storage building or it can be a metro station. Okay, so we are uh, trying to provide you a brief overview of most uh, of the PAV system which is being widely used in the uh, metro stations and the buildings both. So what is the public addressing system? So it is a nothing but an electronic sound amplification and distribution system with a microphone amplifier and loudspeaker. Okay, so uh, this, that is the public addressing system. If you go for the PAVA, that is public addressing and the voice alarm system. Okay, it allows a safe and a controlled building evacuation to be managed in case of emergency. Say for example, if some fire accident is happening, okay, fire alarm is, uh, you know, creating a sound to evacuate. So at that time, a clear voice message okay, has to be initiated by the system for the building evacuation. So in such cases, uh, this PAV system is mostly used. Okay, where and all we can use? Mostly for the home security purpose, we can use this PAV system. We can use this for uh, metro stations, railway stations, and wherever the fire alarm system evacuation is uh, there in the buildings, even in the industries, we can use this PAV system. Okay, how it looks like. See here, you might have come through, uh, you know, so many uh, systems in your life. Uh, so mostly this PAV system, this is how it looks like. Okay, we have a connecting pins if you are using the mics. Okay, and we have a different sort of microphones. We have a rubber microphone, we have a capacitor microphone, we have a dynamic microphone, we have a crystal microphone, we have a carbon microphones. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, most importantly, the connector pins, we have a male pin and a female three pins also. And if you go for a um, microphone varieties, we have so many varieties. We have a XLR type, we have a 6.5 mm jack, we have a RCA type, okay. And for these, we have both input socket as well as the plug also, okay. And if you go for a wireless microphones, we have so many varieties. We have a handheld um, uh, cordless microphones, we have a wireless caller microphones, okay. And uh, mostly for the, you know, uh, mixing purpose we are using the six channel mixers and for the amplifying purpose we have an amplifiers okay so this is an example of a system which is being implemented in a uh, our railway station see here we have a remote service we have a redundant control unit we have an announcement for the speakers okay and see here in in the main server room we will have this main data communication hub so from the main data communication hub Okay, uh, even in the platform, we have a small displays. See here, so when you go for a ticket counter in a railway station, near the ticket counter, this main data communication hub will be there. We have a display of all the trains which is uh, coming in all the platforms. But when you go into the concern platform, in that one, we have a single display which mentions in that platform what train is going to come. So all this entire system is being managed with the help of this. PAVA system, this remote server and with the help of this redundancy control unit, uh, you know, it is communicating with the help of this main data uh, communication hub to the main display and for to the platforms, we have a platform data communication hub with the help of this plat uh, platform data communication hub, it is getting communicated to the uh, displays in the platform. Okay. And even in the TV also, we can make a display also. Okay. So see here, uh, most of the things, even if uh, some if uh, persons who are working in a railway station or making any sort of announcement with the help of this mic, uh, they used to announce. Okay, and uh, uh, each and every floor, every platform, we have a uh, speakers. So with the help of these speakers, uh, you know, with the help of the amplifiers, okay, they are trying to amplify the uh, communication data which is being coming from the main announcement, and with the help of this mic, they are trying to. Um, communicate what uh, they they want to tell to us uh, for the passengers who is coming to the uh, railway stations and this is an example of an ahuja which is an amplifier okay it has so many features we have sockets for um, you know connecting the mic inputs and we have a volume control switch we have an auxiliary volume control we have a box speaker control we have a bass control switch we have a treble control switch and we have a indication for the power and we have a indication for the overload we have a reset button 
okay like that we have so many features at the front view and if you go for a back side view so mostly we, we have a fuse terminal in order to uh, connect the power supply we have a ac provision also and we have a dc power provisions also okay uh, and for uh, communicating and connecting our speakers we have a com ports with a different resistance okay and apart from it these are the power megaphones which we can uh, announce uh, with the help of our normal uh, speakers and we have a condenser microphones also and we have this is the chairman unit which is being mostly in the main control room because uh, uh, if, if we press this there is a switch provision in this uh, chairman unit and if you press that and if you talk uh, so what will happen uh, the priority will be the highest priority will be given to this one so even though the, there may be so many sounds or even the music which is playing in the speakers if someone press this uh, chairman unit and talk uh, the, this will be given the highest priority and if anybody need to speak something uh, uh, in between any sort of uh, musical activities or which is already happening with the help of this chairman unit they can convey the things to the audience and this is the delicate unit which uh, don't have this uh, priority switch okay and apart from the normal amplifier we have a central amplifiers in order to you know the main amplifier will act as a master and these central amplifiers will act as a slave and uh, uh, with the help of this we can connect to the multiple devices okay so and uh, how the pav systems looks so see this is how it looks like okay and see here we have a power supply unit and we will have a um, different channel mixtures okay uh, these channel mixtures we often used for uh, you know making the musics uh, clear a uh, little audible to everyone okay and we, even we have a day precursors also okay and these are the different amplifiers with the different wattages which is being connected with the section channel mixture okay and uh, from every you know end uh, we have a uh, feedback amplifiers which will give which will be given uh, connected with the section channel mixture and uh, say for example if you are planning to uh, create a PAV system in a conference room. So this is the one of the example how it looks like. Okay, uh, so so many speakers will be there. There might be a chairman unit. We have a delicate unit. Okay, and see here. Uh, normally we have a um, this uh, main PAV control unit. Okay, we, and we have a wireless receivers and for connecting with the wireless microphones. And we have a wall speaker. We have a ceiling speaker. Okay, and even uh, cassette recorders also we can connect. With the help of this uh, um, PAV system, so this is an example of PAV system which normally uh, will be established in the GCC countries, mostly in the metro stations, airports, and um, even the multi-storage buildings, malls. Okay, uh, in those places, uh, this is how the PAV system um, looks like. See here, we have a main system manager. Okay, and we have a surveillance frame. Okay, and uh, for, uh, for the for the surveillance frame and the main system manager to work properly, we have emergency power supply. Also, say for example, um, normally we used to connect with the non power supply or, uh, power supply, but if any power failure happens, so in that's in such occasions we need a redundant emergency power supply. So we, with the help of this uh, emergency power supply, we are uh, you know maintaining the power to the system manager as well as the surveillance frame, and apart from it. Uh, See here, uh, most importantly, uh, the fire detection alarm is the most important critical alarm because once we received it, we need to do the evacuation process. So it is uh, whatever uh, happening in, uh, with the help of the speakers, this is given as the most highest priority. So it will be connected to the system manager and even the fireman uh, microphone also being getting connected to this PAVA system. If any uh, signal which is, uh, happens between the, from these two, Okay, it will be given to the highest priority and the scenario will happen. Okay, and apart from it, in order to connect the speakers, we are using the amplifiers. Amplifiers will have a different, based on the number of um, watts. Okay, uh, this differs. See here, it is a 4 into 150 watts uh, amplifier and this is an example of the 4 into 300 watts uh, amplifier. So, all the speakers will be getting connected to it. From the speakers, it will be given to a digital mixture. From the digital mixture, it will be uh, connecting to all the uh, amplifiers and it will be directed to the uh, surveillance frame okay and apart from it, we have so many input signals like a mic wireless microphone okay uh, pre amplifier microphones so all the things will be getting connected to it and also we have a remote microphones also uh, for the local paging 
purposes we can use this uh, microphones and so as we told earlier this is one of the another example where we have a server room where all the data will be saved here okay and we, we will have a evacuation okay this will be given the highest priority if anybody is trying to talk if um, uh, they have they are uh, conducting any sort of drills with the help of these mics they can communicate with the entire persons who are uh, in the building okay and these are the different fire zones so based on the fire zones the speakers are getting distributed um, <clears throat> and uh, see here as we told earlier in so many ways we can design the PAV system whatever way it is but uh, the PAV system basically will have an uh, amplifier and it will have a central amplifiers also and based on the number of uh, speaker lines uh, based on the number of uh, channels uh, there are so many varieties okay uh, so these are some of the examples uh, of um, PAV system with the different sort of uh, channel amplifiers okay and see here this is one of the another example uh, in nowadays uh, in most of the places uh, redundancy configuration is very much important see here we will have a you know uh, main okay main uh, main server uh, from the server we have uh, two different systems for controlling the entire master and uh, slave networks see here we have a primary system and we have a secondary system also both will get connected uh, to the uh, slaves uh, through the local network and the cat6 cables okay uh, if uh, the system is working so it will try to evacuate using this speakers through the main server and if any failure occur in the primary system this secondary system will take charge and it will try to uh, control the entire buildings so as we told earlier uh, in, uh, in the latest PAV system we have so many features see here we have a um, uh, many number of inputs like microphone BGM CD players everything and also we have a bypass paging and we have a uh, mics to connect with the PAV system and we have outputs uh, that is speakers okay and uh, this is where the programming is done in the PAV system okay and apart from it we have a studio software uh, in order to see everything in the workstations we can use this software and apart from it uh, you know we have a redundancy network also so if any failure occurs okay immediately the other one will take charge so this is how the, uh, the nowadays the latest PAV systems are often used in the places where the wireless system is already established and see this is some system architecture okay say for example we have a three floor building from the ground floor first floor second floor and third floor so we have so many zones see here we have a fire alarm system connection with the PAVA main panel and we have a batteries also for the redundancy power supply and uh, we are connecting with the microphones from different floors are getting connected to the PAVA panels and even uh, in the third floor also we have a PAV panel see here uh, so we among we, if we have so many multiple panels one panel will be considered as a master and the other will be considered as a slave and um, you know based on the number of uh, IO connections um, and based on the number of wattages the speakers will be getting connected to the entire system we have uh, so many loudspeaker lines these are loudspeaker lines which are being um, connected in different floors okay and uh, what are the PAV requirements? First thing is that uh, we need to have a loudspeaker lines. Okay, so it should be controlled uh, the break and the short circuit. Okay, and second thing is that uh, we should have a high impedance speaker that is 100 volt technology. Okay, and we should have a long wire, less value of electrical current. Okay, and the installation should be simple. Okay, and uh, the, so the maximum allowable voltage drop can be 10 percent each. And uh, the cables that we are using should be fire rated cables should be fireproof cables okay uh, and also if any damage occurs to a single circuit it should not uh, affect the other circuits so it means we should have a wiring redundancy okay and also uh, we need to uh, pro appropriately design the zones okay for the evacuation process to happen okay and we need to have a different speaker lines in the fire zones and the loudspeaker zones okay and if you're going for a devices okay um, it should be controlled by all the system components okay and say for example if you're using the control unit in the amplifier it should comply the en5416 standard that is fire deduction and fire alarm system part 16 voice alarm control and the indicating equipment standards and if you're going for a power supply units okay for the PAV system it should comply the en5416 
dash 4 that is fire detection in the fire alarm system power supply equipments okay it specifies the requirement and method of testing and the performance criteria for power supply equipments of the fire detection in the fire alarm system installed in the buildings okay next is the loudspeaker which should comply with en 5424 it specifies the requirement test methods and the performance criteria for the loudspeakers it links it has a link between the fire detection system and the users building and most importantly uh, what are the messages we should convey so it should convey message it should have a ability to play different messages to different zones at the same time that is the most important um, requirement of a PAV system it can be it can be an evacuation it can be alert it can be a code or it can be information message also okay so the aim of the broadcast message is not to inform the people about the problem threat but to force them to take into action right, in order to uh, evacuate okay and if you're going for a sound transmission index so the quality of message is very important okay and the coverage area should be greater than or equal to uh, 0.5 that is um, sound transmission index and if you're going for SPL that is sound pressure level with the absolute minimum sound level should be 65 decibels and the absolute uh, uh, sound level at the bedtime is 75 decibels and the maximum level we can use is 120 decibels uh, if you are creating any sort of sound alarms okay and basically we should know, um, uh, try to know about this sound pressure levels along with the, we are correlating the sound pressure level with the distance say for example if we double the distance okay the sound pressure level will drop by 6 decibels say for example okay a speaker is producing 110 decibels at a 1 meter distance okay now what we are going to do okay uh, we are going to increase the distance to 2 meters so at the time what is happening we are uh, now see here now we are increasing the meter from 1 meter to 2 meter that is we are doubling the distance so now what is happening that is sound pressure level is getting reduced to 6 decibels see here uh, the first value is 110 so 110 minus 6 it is 104 decibels and if we once again increase the uh, distance that is from 2 meters to 4 meters it will again the sound pressure level get reduced to uh, 6 more decibels that is 98 decibels okay now we are relating the sound pressure level with the power say for example we have a 3 watt speaker okay which is producing 104 decibels at 2 meters now what we are going to do we are going to increase the power that is we are going to double the power so if we double the power so the uh, sound pressure level will increase by 3 decibels so now you understood so say for example at 3 watts its decibel is 104 decibels so now we had increased we had doubled the power from 3 decibels to 6 decibels so now it is uh, producing a decibel of 107 decibels in 2 meters okay and uh, we, so once again the same thing we are explaining through the table so because this is very much important when you are designing for a uh, speakers inside the building okay so the system can be 100 volt system it can be a 70 volt system or 50 volt system okay amplifier uh, but uh, you know uh, speaker output ma maximum efficiency will be at the 100 volt system if you are going for a 70 volt so the half power so only the 50 percent speaker output will come okay now we are uh, making an estimation loss in the distance effect. say for example that is um, SPL already we know at 1 watt say for example at 1 meter it will be 97 okay and uh, now we are increasing the distance so we all know it if we increase the uh, distance okay the SPL will reduce 6 decibels say for example at the first one so it is uh, at 1 meter it is 97 so we had we had doubled the distance now it is getting reduced to 91 six decibels get reduced in the same way okay in the same way say for example at one watt it's 97 decibels in one meter okay now we are increasing power to two watts so three decibel is getting added 97 plus three it is 100 decibels so this is how you know we need to make a calculation when we are assigning the uh, speakers based on the distances okay so we have a very high noise level high noise level medium noise level and the low noise level based on the decibel ranges so if it is from 85 to 95 it is a very high noise and if it is a uh, 75 to 85 it is a high noise and if uh, decibel ranges from 65 to 75 it is a medium noise and if it is 55 to 65 it is a low noise okay so these are some of the examples okay our uh, if you, the rustles of leaves will be at the 10 decibels and if you are making the low conversation it can be 16 decibels and in the quiet room we have a 30 decibel sound 
okay and in the for a track it will be 90 decibels and uh, for threshold of a uh, pain it will be around 130 decibels so and most important thing is that uh, uh, these sound levels we can um, experience in different environments so those details are given here okay where what sort of high level of decibel sounds are possible okay so next is the sound transmission index so uh, the quality of a message is uh, affected by the following factors one is the level of background noise signal level features of the audio source okay location of the uh, sound source and uh, location plane will be the acoustics of the rooms okay so this is a uh, suspended ceiling speakers which is uh, being used for the PAVA system okay and this is uh, another example of a speaker which is being used inside the suspended ceiling okay and this is an example of a um, uh, ceiling loudspeaker okay with the inbuilt two transducers transformers fuses and the ceramic everything okay and these are mostly used in the technical rooms and the underground garages and in the in-wall and uh, mountings okay and this is an example of a wall one speaker with the inbuilt two transducers transformers and the ceramic fuses this is a um, speaker which is often used in the okay passageway malls underground garages industrial halls warehouses and so these are mostly used in uh, um, industrial halls, okay, open spaces. These sort of speakers are often used. This is mostly used in sports hall, stadiums, open areas, industrial buildings, and the warehouses. Okay, if you are working in a tunnel, okay, if you are planning for a tunnel, then road tunnel, then try to go for these sort of speakers, which has a you know high intelligibility. Okay, now we are going to. Um, Note, um, learn the steps for designing a PAV system. First is that we need to know, determine the quantities. So, for example, we need to figure out how many speakers we are going to uh, install for the console applications. Okay, so the speaker we can classify into three things. It can be a ceiling, a wall baffle speaker, or a horn speakers. Okay. Say so for example, if you are uh, calculating the ceiling speakers, okay. So refer this table. We have a ceiling height of eight. Then it, it is going to cover uh, two fifty square feet. Okay, and if it is a uh, twelve, it is going to cover a uh, five eighty square feet. Say for example, we have a we know the total area. Okay, and we have a speaker coverages also. Okay, so that we can able to find out the number of speakers which is required for the ceilings. Say for example. Um, <coughs> Our total square feet is uh, 2000 square feet. Say, for example, I am telling, okay, and uh, your speaker will cover, okay, 20, uh, 200 square feet. So then we can easily able to calculate the number of speakers required in that particular area. Say, for example, 2000 divided by 200. So 00, zero get will cancel and we have a uh, 20 divided by 2, which is maybe 10. So the 10 number of speakers will be required. Uh, if you are planning for a ceiling speakers in that particular area. So based on the yeah, square feet area available and uh, if you know the speaker coverage we will try to able to find out the number of speakers required. Same say for example if you are going for a wall baffle speaker simple thing we have a total square feet divided by 600 square feet we have a total number of speakers and if you are going for a horn loud speakers then most important thing that you should know is that apart from the coverage square feet you should know the ambient noise levels also so based on ambient noise level, there are so many varieties so here also the formula is something which is same related to the ceiling speakers we need to know the total area and we need to know the speaker coverage so that we can, we can able to find out the number of speakers which is required uh, in that particular location so with the help of this we can able to determine the quantities of speakers which is required to design basically for a PAVA system okay now we already know the total number of speakers so we need to add all the speakers plus the volume controls together so that we'll, uh, we can able to find out the total power capacity required okay and voltage matching is the most important thing say for example we have a power amplifier so it will have an output okay but you owing to the transmission there might be some losses so in order to overcome those losses so uh, along with the speaker we will have a step down transformers so that it will try to match uh, you know it will try to match the required voltages um, for the speaker to produce so so what is the speaker is going to do so it is going to uh, you know, uh, convert a electrical quantity into a physical quantity that is um, sound okay 
and say for example let us consider a 70 volt constant supply system so, uh, we have a speaker of uh, 2.5 watts and we have a speaker of 5 watts and we have a speaker of uh, 125 watts okay 1.25 watts see here even though for the uh, there are uh, different speakers okay we can connect everything we can loop them and we can connect it with the uh, 70 volt system okay and uh, most importantly uh, when you are designing a speakers okay uh, to install inside the ceiling you need to plan like this say for example first thing that you need to know is the, what is the ceiling height okay say for example if the ceiling height is 10 feet okay so the starting speaker installation you should start uh, you know at a distance of 10 feet from the wall okay and uh, second thing is that what is the distance so distance between the first speaker and the second uh, speaker should be two times the ceiling height say for example if the ceiling height is 10 feet then the second speaker you should install is 2 into 10 that is 20 feet so from the first speaker there should be 20 feet distance to install the second speaker okay even from the rows to row from the first row to second row the distance should be two times the ceiling height that is say for example 2 into 10 that is 20 feet example we are telling okay so these patterns you can do it on your own based on your requirements okay next if you're going for a horn speaker layout then first thing you should know is you should know the ambient noise ranges so uh, based on that randomly with the from the with the help of these charts you can install the horn speakers okay uh, so based on your preferred design you can install it and if you're going for a wall baffle speakers you can use the building roof pillars or the other available support for mounting these wall baffles speakers and if you are planning for a hallway or a room wall okay so these speakers works well with the room and hallway which is around 20 feet to 60 feet wide okay so this is an example the first you can start at a distance of uh, 10 feet okay and uh, even at the second one uh, uh, the speaker which is at the opposite to it you can go from uh, you can install start it from after 20 feet from the from the wall okay and if you're going for an open area okay say for example if you're going for an open area uh, first one you are if you are planning to install it at the 10 feet okay try to maintain a distance of uh, 20 feet for the second one okay and for in the in between spaces uh, that is uh, in between spaces of the rows try to maintain the uh, 30 feet if it is an open area okay this is an example we are trying to provide you um, say for example if you, uh, you have a room up to uh, 35 square, square meters then we one speaker is sufficient okay and if you're going for a open space office okay we have um, uh, try to install one speaker for from six to seven meter coverage okay even for the corridors also same principle uh, that is uh, for one speaker it will be from six to seven meters and if you're for going for underground uh, parking uh, this, is, this is an example layout we are trying to provide you so most thing important thing is that site survey checklist is very much important okay uh, most important thing is that what type of telephone port is available that you should know okay how many mic inputs are required how many auxiliary inputs are required okay how are you going to uh, split them into zones okay um, and uh, is there any time uh, tones okay during the signal shift changes okay and what are the system features needed we need to have a manual mode, mode, we have an automatic level control, automatic mute to automatic enhancement, graphic equalizer, like that so many features are available. Okay. And if you're going for uh, area needs, okay, we should know what is the area and what is its length and width, okay, and what is its ceiling height and what is the ambient noise, okay, and will there be any large changes in the ambient noises and what sort of environment it is, it is, is it, whether it is office or whether it is a warehouse or whether it is a factory, whether it is a hallway, whether it is a cafeteria, all sh these things we should know, okay. And we need to make sure where we are going to install a speaker, whether in the indoor or in the outdoor. So those things also, if you are buying for an outdoor, then IP rating is very much important. It should be around IP 65 or 66 rating, okay. How are you going to install your speakers? Okay, where are you going to mount? Whether in the suspended ceiling or in the wall or in the beams or in the grounds. Okay, whether we need a volume control. Okay, whether we need a attenuators. 
ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് ഇസ് ദർ ഇനി ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് മ്യൂസിക് നീഡേഡ്സ് ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ദിസ് ഫൈലോംസ് ഇൻ ആർ യൂസ് അപ്പാർട്ട് ഫ്രം ഐറ്റം ഇഫ് യു ഗോയിങ് ഫോർ എ പ്ലാനിങ് യുവർ സ്പീക്കേഴ്സ് ഇൻ ദ ഫയർ എവാക്വേഷൻ സോൺസ് ദെൻ യു നീഡ് ടു ഷെഡ്യൂൾ ഇറ്റ് ഫസ്റ്റ് യു നീഡ് ടു നോ ദ വാട്ട് ആർ ദ സോൺ നമ്പേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് വാട്ട് ഇസ് എ ഏരിയ ഓക്കെ ഇഫ് ദ ഇഫ് യു വോണ്ട് എനി നോട്ട്സ് യു കൻ മേക്ക് ഇറ്റ് ഓക്കെ ആൻഡ് സെക്കൻഡ് മോസ്റ്റ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് തിങ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് പബ്ലിക് അഡ്രസ്സിങ് സോൺസ് ഓൾസോ യു ഷുഡ് നോ so area wise what are, what are all the public addressing zones what is the tag number that you have given to them so that it will be easy for you to address okay even uh, for this uh, fireman mic microphones also you should know what is the mic tag number and in which area it is located those details you should know so the, all these details will be very much useful when you are making a programming if any fire occurs what sort of alarms should be okay and if you going for a speaker wiring okay impedance is very much important say for example um you had a plan to connect in 16 ohm impedance okay first thing is that you should know the resistance say for example if the resistance is 16 ohms 16 plus 16 that is 32 ohms in the group a for the group b also same 16 plus 16 that is 32 ohms so if you in order to calculate the total impedance that is ra into rb divided by ra plus rb so if you calculate you will get around 16 ohms and what uh, we should know the do's and don'ts when we are doing the speaker wires so this is this method we should not do it why we are not doing it very simple it is a serious looping if any disconnection happens in between okay the rest of the loops will get affected so we we should avoid okay uh, this sort of wirings okay and this wiring is very preferred because we have a parallel connections okay even though these are in the series if even though this loop get affected rest of the things will work properly okay and we also have some other uh, do's and don'ts of speaker wirings also this is a wrong connection if you are connecting any sort of speakers to this amplifier like this it won't work you should connect like this okay and if you are in the same way uh, even for the this is an example of a serious connection and for if you are making uh, trying to connect anything parallelly this is a wrong connection and this is how the right connection you should make it so for speaker cables we have so many varieties we have a shielded spark uh, speaker cable we have a non shielded utp wire and even in the shielded we have a two different classification one is a, a single connector shielded cable and we have a two connector shielded cables also okay and what are the recommended cable sizes say for example if you have a 30 watts load speaker then you can go use if you are using a 0.75 mm square up to 800 meters you can use for this load okay and if you have one square mm then for the 30 watts load you can use up to 1066 meters if you going for 1.5 mm square okay if you if the load is 30 watts load then up to 1600 meters you can use like then same way for 60 watts so it will be 400 meters 533 meters and 800 meters and for the 120 watts you know uh, the wire range points on five one and 1.5 the distance can be around maximum distance is 200 meters to 66 meters and 400 meters and this is another example and say for example if you are calcul if you know the wire size and the maximum length the load impedance uh, we can calculate if there is any power losses so this is an example of how many meters we can use okay a particular wire this is an example with reference to the transmit upper frequencies Thank you so much please subscribe and press the bell icon if you want to know more and learn more you can contact us we have provided the contact details here and uh, we well and renewable systematics we are providing uh, plc programming training for siemens and rolling delta plcs and you, if you want to work in gcc countries you want to have a idea about the building management system and the building automation control system uh, we, you can contact us we have provided the contact details here and if you are planning any dc lighting system for your home factories and uh, uh, sheds you can contact us okay where the eb power is not available and if you have a any plan for do the um, fencing for your agriculture farms we are providing the solar fencing kits uh, and we are also providing solar on grid off grid and hybrid irrigation uh, even solar lights and solar pump services also and if you want to know the access control system basics and uh, this uh, uh, electric vehicle systems and uh, uh, public addressing systems okay and uh, even if you want to know some of the basics related to solar you providing um, the training along with the certification we are also providing the consultancy support also so you can contact us thank you so much